Hey there, I'm author Shannon Reber, and today I am interviewing Mary Ellen Humphrey about her story, which is in Dead End, uh, the anthology that our writers group has put out. So, Mary Ellen, hello. Hello, Shannon. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. How are you? I'm excellent. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Okay, so the anthology, uh, let's see, it's 16 authors. Uh, you are one of 16. Um, okay. And um, let's see, yours is, see, th this isn't your genre, is it? Well, it's not something my, you usually go for. My story is called The Sleep People. And uh, it's a, a, a small story that I wrote <clears throat> many years ago. And <clears throat> excuse me, let me have a drink here. <laughs> I haven't been talking enough today. <laughs> um, when I first started writing, uh, after my children had empty nest, right? My children ah. went off to college, and I always wanted to be a writer. So where do you start, right? I didn't know where to start. So I said, I need some guidelines. I need some goals. I need something. So back then, this is pre-email, pre you know internet, if you can imagine such a time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that time yeah. actually. So I, um, I started going through magazines and looking at submission guidelines. And in the process of doing that, I submitted quite a few stories. And this particular story uh, was actually published in one of the magazines. Oh. So uh, I had some fun with it. When you do a short story with you know, a certain set of rules, it has to be you know 6,000 words or less. It has to be all of this. It kind of forces you to... Um, really to hone your writing skill and then if you're submitting it and you want it to be accepted you want it to be the best story it can so you you spend a little more time with it and so this was one of those stories of the many stories that I did back then and the funny thing about it is it's actually the kind of story I do enjoy writing and oh. so I, I kind of came full circle I went through nonfiction, memoir you know all these novels and so forth and now I'm back to writing shorter stories novellas and shorter stories that do have the sort of paranormal piece to it ah. yeah so, so while it may be sounds a little odd if you know what my books are <laughs> actually if you know me it really isn't <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I mean that's exactly where I'm at too so uh, I totally understand <laughs> okay <laughs> well okay so the question that uh, I've been asking uh, all the authors is do you actually believe in ghosts Oh, my goodness. Well, <laughs> first of all, the word ghost is kind of, it's this expansive word, right? What does right. it really mean? Is it, you know, what, angels, demons, <laughs> whatever. So if you're asking me, do I believe that I have had paranormal experiences, the answer is yes. Okay. If you ask me <clears throat> what I think of a ghost, what a ghost is, I think it's a a deceased person's entity, you know, and I would describe it as that. Right. And um, I'm working on a, a kind of fun book right now. I'm calling it tentatively My Paranormal Experiences. Hey! <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't think of myself in any way as psychic or, you know, any of that. But if I look back over my life, there have been some interesting, unusual experiences. And some of them involve people who have been deceased. Okay. Some of them are people I know, and some of them are people I don't know. So, you know, the kind of the haunting of the building, that, oh, that yes. sort of ghost, and then the kind of ghost that somebody who's passed appears or lets you know they're okay or something like that. Right. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, well, let's see, you, you told me a long time ago, I hope it's okay if I mention it, um, a, a lot of people have said that they've actually had um, experiences with ghosts after they had some kind of near-death experience. And you had one as a child, correct? I did. You know, what's interesting about that is I was very young. I was like five years old. Okay. And I hadn't yet learned anything about near-death experiences. I hadn't heard anything. I didn't have any preconceived expectations. Right. as a child. And, right, yeah. um, and so I remember very clearly, it's one of those early memories that sort of is so ingrained in your brain that you, you just remember it. It's like looking at a photograph, it's there. Right. And, uh, and so I had, I'd been very ill and I, <clears throat> I was on this 
table with my grandparents on each side of me. Both of them were praying, <laughs> hoping I would make it through the night. And uh, and I and I left. I left my body. I went through this dark tunnel. I went to the end of the dark tunnel, and uh, it, it felt like velvet. It didn't feel scary. It didn't feel frightening. It felt like I was floating in velvet, and um, and there was this beautiful light at the end. And I, I thought, gee, I want to go there, right? <laughs> I was just a little kid. <laughs> and I got right to the entrance of this light. And a, a woman's voice, very kind, the kindest voice I've ever heard, said, it's not time, Mary Ellen. You have to go back. And oh. I did go back. <laughs> but I, I, never, I never forgot it. And, yeah. and I, I, I think that people who have had something like this happen to them mm -hmm. sometimes probably people forget they may have and they think it's a dream or something um and i didn't tell anybody about it for a long time uh, my grandmother was my confidant when i was a child and she was afraid of anything that was superstitious you know oh. she didn't want to <laughs> oh, talk yes. about anything scary like that but, <laughs> but it's interesting as she got older she told me about some experiences that she had had that she didn't want to tell anybody else, I guess, because I had shared my unusual thing. She felt comfortable. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. And so she said to me one day when she was visiting, she was probably in her 80s. And my grandfather had passed many years before, like 20 years prior. And she said, I know you're not going to believe me, but a couple of very odd things have been happening. And I was standing at my kitchen sink. And I felt earnest as my grandfather. I felt earnest behind me. And I know it was him. And I heard his voice. And he said, Francis, when your time comes, don't be afraid. And oh. she's telling me this story. And she said, you know, I had this wonderful feeling of peace and comfort. And, and I knew I wouldn't be. And uh, I thought it was nice that she shared that with me. That and then she took bumps. Yeah. And then she told me another time she was shopping in the store and this was all towards the end of her life and she was top, top, shopping in the store and there was an, a, a man sort of next to her where she was reaching for I don't know apples or something oranges and, and she looked at him and she said he had the kindest eyes and I knew he was an angel and I said are you sure and she said yes because all he did is smile at me and then he was gone and oh. and I thought somehow something was comforting her, helping her prepare, you know. Okay, for her yeah. end. So I said to her, and you're gonna think this is weird, but we made a pact. <laughs> I said, okay, Grammy, how about if we make a deal, whichever one of us goes first. <laughs> and of course I was quite young and she was quite old. <laughs> but we made a deal, whichever one goes first, we'll contact the other one. Okay. And let them know. Okay. And I forgot all about that. You know, several years went by and she passed away when she was 88. And uh, the day she passed away, I was very upset. And I, I remember I, I went to sleep. I fell, I fell asleep and I had this really strange dream where there was a message on my message machine from my grandmother. And all it said was, tell Junior, I'm sorry. Tell Junior, I'm sorry. And I'm like, what the heck is this? And so <laughs> Junior was what she called my dad. So oh. I, I called up my dad and I said, I know you think this is weird, but I feel like I have to tell you this. And I said, Grammy wants me to say to you that she's sorry. I said, does that make any sense to you? And he paused for a minute and he said, yes, I know exactly what she's talking about. <laughs> ah. So I don't know. Who knows? But, Interesting. You know, there's so many things. So that's why I started thinking about all this. And I said, well, I can't say for certain what any of this is. Our brains are so complicated and, and can, you know, trick us into all kinds of things. But yeah. some things are just curious enough that I think I want to write it down and say and share this with the world and say let's have a conversation what's happened to you right right that's yeah. very cool yeah when this story came out by the way uh, oh not this one this is a different one I I got off track sorry oh you don't mean the sleep people you mean yeah another story. story that I okay. wrote okay but, okay um, the sleep people let me tell you where that came from <laughs> yeah please <laughs> <laughs> so when I was young I spent a lot of time with my grandparents and they had a lot of uh, wood things like wood doors, uh, 
wood uh, paneling, all kinds of stuff. And so when it was time for my nap, my grandmother would say, lay down on the couch and take a nap. And probably she needed a break. <laughs> I was a little bit. Yeah. And as I would try to fall asleep, I was really scared of these wood grain things because I, I saw creatures. Now, oh. have you ever had and you look at a, the grain of wood and you say, wow, that looks like, you know, a dolphin or that looks like you, yeah. know, you see something in it, kind of like clouds. Yeah, you see yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so that's where the story kind of originated oh. was, was as a youngster. I must have had a very vivid imagination. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I re remember thinking, you know, I don't want to go to sleep because the sleep people are going to come get me. <laughs> Oh, that makes sense, right? <laughs> it does. Now I get it. <laughs> yeah, so curious, what did you think of that story? It was very sweet. I, I actually, I enjoyed the fact that it was, it was spooky without being a horror story. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. And I, I enjoyed that, you know, as like a, a nice little, um, a light touch uh, in the midst of our ghost stories, etc. I, I really, I enjoyed that. I thought it was very sweet and um, still creepy. <laughs> yeah, it was creepy, uh, yeah. but, it, but it, was a, it was a story you could actually read it to children. Right, right, you exactly. Know, my exactly. grandkids could read it and they, they wouldn't have bad dreams. <laughs> they might not take a nap. But <laughs> or they'd have a new excuse not to. Uh, exactly, a new excuse is always handy when you're a little kid. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if you want me to tell you about the other story that I did back Ooh, then. Oh, um, let's see. Hold on. Let's see the, uh, I think we're good. Yes, you can tell me about your time? other story. Okay. <laughs> we do. The other story had to be 200 words or less. So that's a really good challenge. And I oh, love wow. that challenge. So Great. I said, okay, had to be something you experienced. So I thought and thought, and I remembered that this happened. So I called the story The Warning. And it was about how when my child was a new baby, my first baby was like, five or six months old and I was walking him in a baby carriage and along a very busy street and I had to cross a side street so I, I pulled the baby carriage down over the, uh, the curb to get into the street I didn't see anybody coming the, the busy street was busy but the side street didn't have anyone and then okay. as I got the carriage down I heard this very strong command it was a masculine voice that said put the carriage back on the sidewalk Okay, and I did. I hurried up and put it back and I stepped back. And at that instant, a tractor trailer truck turned down that street and oh. its back tires came up over the curb. Oh, that's scary. Isn't that scary? That's and really scary. I later learned that there was a tractor trailer driving school somewhere down that street. So whoever this driver was <laughs> did not know what he was doing. <laughs> but anyway, when I looked around, there wasn't anybody there. So okay. I wrote the story and it got published in this magazine. Okay. And I got a call from uh, a guy who was writing a book called Angel Stories. We discussed it for some time. And I told him, I said, I never called this an angel. And he thought that was interesting. And he said to me, now this dates me a bit, but he said, <laughs> would you go with me to the Phil Donahue show? <laughs> and if those of you who don't know who Phil Donahue was, it was the Oprah before the Oprah. <laughs> yes. And yes, so I, I declined. I was way too shy. But he did interview <laughs> me on a radio show. Okay. And um, that was then made into, a, there was a, a production company called Cascom, who was doing a series called Angel Stories on the Learning Channel. And they oh. took my voice and reenacted it. Okay. Okay. And so that was great, right? But then they, yeah. sent, a, then they sent out a press release in the state I lived in to tell everybody, you know, and it, the title, cause I was in the house, the state house at the time was legislator touched by an angel. Uh, oh. <laughs> now that's more odd than the story itself, I think. But <laughs> at any rate, it was really great fun because I like people that. started sharing their stories with me. So that's amazing. Yeah. I, I have to say, I, I do find it uh, as a uh, recovering politician. I do find it interesting that, um, well, um, <clears throat> that you were so shy. Oh, like, I was. I was being so shy and also being, you know, in charge of the government. It 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 <laughs> kind of cracks me up a little bit. It, like, it is I, really odd when I was but elected. I, I have heard you, you know, stand up for your beliefs. You just you're you're quiet about it. You're not like the the forceful, demanding. Listen to me now. 
like (laughs) a lot of these idiots are. I think uh, being being elected in the state I was in, it was pretty easy because nobody wanted to run, but, (laughs) but I, um, I was so shy before I got elected that just answering the telephone, I would break out in hives. Oh, I could not wow. answer the role. Are you present? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but it forced me to. It forced me to find my voice, and so I'm, okay. I'm very grateful That's for that. Good. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, life is amazing. <laughs> Politician uh, politics actually helps some people. <gasps> <laughs> you, gotta look for, you gotta look for the good somewhere, the silver lining. <laughs> silver lining, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, for, um, let's see, for future reference, um, your books are in Genres Bookshop. Um, let's see, you've got, how many books do you have in my shop? It's like five or six, isn't it? At least that, yeah. I think I have I don't know, five or six or seven, somewhere around there. Okay. How yeah. many books do you have published total. in total? Somewhere over a dozen, but I haven't counted. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I gotta take a look. Some of my books from, from the earlier days are, were nonfiction. I did a book about the impeachment trial in our state. Oh. And um, then I did, I did do a spoof on politics called Politics and Poltergeist, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I, of- I actually do. I want to read that very much. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Yeah, I think it's a it's a yet to be discovered great book. <laughs> I understand. I have a few of those too. Yeah, yeah, we have we have to figure out how to get discovered because we have a lot to share. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, so you've got a dozen books. You've got mm, seven ish, something like that, uh, in my shop. You've got uh, short stories out everywhere that have been published and. Um, I even did a book of poetry, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Is, that's out now, isn't it? It's called When the Spirit Moves Me. And okay. it was it was really hilarious because I just decided one day to gather up all the little poems I had written. <laughs> and I was surprised I had quite a few. So I put them together and, and several folks ordered the book and were thrilled, I guess, because they're, they're silly story, you know, poems. <laughs> you know, <they're> not, <laughs> um, a few of them are. I, I did... They're from my life. So there's a poem about Waco, Texas, and there's oh. a poem about um, uh, Christopher Reeves, the, the last action hero. There's oh. there's all of these different things. There's even one about 9-11. Okay. So it, it kind of uh, spans spans my lifetime. <laughs> okay, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. And, a, and some writing poems, too, you know, about the writer life and how hard <laughs> it is sometimes to capture the muse, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. My my muse comes and goes. She 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 just went <laughs> yeah <laughs> and some are very short and some are longer there's one I like it's called bad hair day oh, you know, that's day, funny. It's really short some days things go really well and other days split ends <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta like have that a of humor you gotta figure it out because life's too <laughs> short to be unhappy <laughs> exactly I absolutely agree with you on that yeah okay so dead end is uh, out now. We have ebooks. We have paperbacks. Um, we have our opening part. Well, it's not exactly a release day party, but it's it's close enough to release day that we're going to call it a release day party. But it's on Halloween. Are you going to be able to to attend the party? I think I, think I can. Yes, I'm planning Yay! to. Okay, yeah. that's I fantastic. Would, I'll have to talk to you more about it after because I'm not sure if I'm supposed <laughs> to do anything. <laughs> uh, we're not we're not that concerned about it right now. We've got okay. hot, hot cider. We've got donuts. I don't think we need anything else personally. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm good. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh the uh release day parte is uh, on Halloween. Um, it's at the YWCA in Westfield, New York. That's where Genres Bookshop is. Um, Mary Ellen Humphrey will hopefully, fingers crossed, be there. Yes, I'll be there with all my okay, good. spooky stories. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, if if anybody can come, please do feel free. And um, everybody is welcome, except my cats. My cats are not welcome. They think they're welcome, but they're not. So this is open to the public? <laughs> it is, yes. It's open to anybody who this, wants to buy a book. What time does it start? Starts at five. Okay, on Halloween. On Halloween, yes. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I, the, the reason that I mentioned my cat is uh, she's she's my little black cat who likes to come and uh, uh, invade all of my interviews, every single interview. And uh, yeah, black cat Halloween. She thinks she's invited, but she's not. <laughs> she would fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> she would, but she's terrified of everything and everyone other than me and Joel. So oh, okay. <laughs> well, I actually have four cats here. I don't know why uh, they're yes. not. <laughs> not climbing on me right now. I guess they're scared of the, <laughs> of the interview. Uh, well, you know, my this is the only time my my little one comes out is when I'm doing an interview. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I, have, I have one that hates it when I'm on the phone. She, oh. <laughs> she meows and tries to bite the phone. I'm like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> uh i'm always telling joel i want a dog but uh he he doesn't like the idea so this is why we have cats i'm trying to talk him into a bunny now too though so fingers crossed they get a bunny to go with the cats yeah (laughs) dogs are a little more work to take out and stuff you know they're nice i love dogs but i do too as i get older i like cats (laughs) because they take care of themselves (laughs) yes exactly but every once in a while they are very demanding yeah (laughs) <laughs> okay so um dead end yet again it's um i don't it's gonna be backwards but uh no it's perfect i can see it oh you can okay good well there we go okay. i uh i took the picture um it's it's yeah uh genres authors guild is our group and um i hope everybody buys it so oh, there I'm- we go I haven't actually read all the stories yet, so I'm eager to get my copy. Oh, <laughs> Good Halloween reading. <laughs> yes, exactly. But no, none of our stories are actually Halloween. Uh, true, true. Circular, circular. Wow. Where did my brain go? Well, it's not I Halloween it, related. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just <laughs> unusual stories. <laughs> yeah, unusual, spooky. Sometimes they're just odd <laughs> yeah like like the sleep people <laughs> yes well that's not what i meant but uh, yeah <laughs> but they only come when you're asleep <laughs> exactly but only when you're asleep during the day right 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 <laughs> otherwise they're absorbed <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of funny very funny and cute you're welcome it was, it was a fun story <laughs> i'm glad you put it in and um yeah so I hope everybody reads the book and uh, Mary Ellen, I will see you on Halloween uh, for the party and um, everybody else. I hope you come. Thank you, Shannon. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.